Hey team, welcome back. Today, we're going to be focusing on similar shapes. So get ready to sharpen your mind and master nonverbal reasoning. In this video, we'll be diving into the fascinating world of similar shapes. So join us as we work with mind-bending puzzles and equip you with the skills to tackle them with confidence. So whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting your NVR journey, get ready to level up your logical thinking and ace those tests. So in each question that follows, the two shapes on the left have one or more features which make them similar to each other. So you must find the figure on the right which is most similar to the ones on the left. So what do we notice right away? That perhaps boxes one and two have four-sided shapes and one circle? Well, if so, then this would lead us to B, C or even D. So we can eliminate A right away. However, figures one and two also have one gray shape. Now we can eliminate B because that doesn't have a gray shape. And we can certainly eliminate D because they are all gray shapes. So C is our answer. I hope that was clear. Let's now dive into the next question. So what do we notice about figures one and two? Well, these are made up of a shape with a number of arrows entering and leaving it and a number of small straight lines. And in figure two, the number of arrow shapes entering and leaving is two, as is the number of small straight lines. So we've got two entering, two leaving, and two straight lines. So the main shape and the arrows are different colors. Let's remember that. So if we take a look at box A, it has two arrows entering and none leaving while the same number of straight lines in C, but that doesn't match the number of arrows. So again, we can eliminate A and C. But if we take a look at B, however, that works because in D, the main shape and the arrows are the same color and we are not looking for the same color. So once again, remember to find the similarities and then use that to find your answer. Okay, let's go over to the next question. So what do you notice here? Well, we can see that in figures one and two, the large shapes are enlarged versions of what would make the smaller shape whole. So as you can see, these corners here, for example, the four quarter circle shapes would make a larger shape that would complete the shape in the center. So in box A and B, the larger shape faces the wrong way. So we can eliminate that. While in D, the smaller shape faces the wrong way. So C would be the only one that would work. So if we were to enlarge this shape, this would fit nicely into the larger shape. Beautiful work. Let's now dive into the next question. And don't forget to pause the video at any given time, attempt the question, and then press play to see the answers. Alrighty, so figure one and figure two. Well, they're made up of a main shape which is divided into four equal parts and four arrows. So you've got four equal parts, four arrows in both one and two. Now, three of the arrows point out and one points in towards the main shape. So if we take a look at box A, it has the correct shape, but two arrows are pointing in. So for that reason, we're gonna eliminate this. And if we take a look at box B, that also has the right shape, but now three arrows are pointing in. So that can also be eliminated. So if we look at C, we can then notice that the center points are being divided equally. Three arrows are pointing outside and one arrow is pointing inside. So C is our answer. Again, if we take a look at D, you can also notice that there are three arrows pointing out and one arrow pointing in, but it is not being divided equally. 
Okay. Moving over to the next question. What do we notice about one and two? So we all know that we're working with spirals here of different kinds. But the first thing to notice is that the spirals in figures one and two are not touching at any point. A is touching, B is touching, and D is touching. So C is our answer, and there we are. That was a quick and easy one. Let's now go ahead and dive into the next question. Ooh, so we've got a number of different shapes here now. So always go in with what you notice first. What is it about these horizontal shapes in each figure? Well, it shows us that they should sit over the large vertical shape as they do in figures one and two. So remember, sitting over the large vertical shape. So if we take a look instantly at figure B, the horizontal shape sits over both vertical shapes. So for that reason, we could eliminate that. In C, it sits under both vertical shapes, so we could eliminate that. However, A actually works for us because we've got the horizontal shape in each figure sitting over the large one only and under the small one. And that's our answer. Okay, let's move over to the next question. So what do we notice here? Well, figures one and two each have two shapes. So the right-hand shape looks as if it's a one-quarter anti-clockwise rotation of the shape on the left. So if we take a look at boxes A, B, C, and D, it looks as if A is the only one that does this, going over to the left. Beautiful. Over to the next question. So straight away, figures one and figures two have a shape with the larger number of sides being behind the shape with the smaller number of sides. So three to four, four to five. So now we're looking for something that works this way. Again, you can see A has got a larger shape at the front, C is not even touching, and D has the same number of sides. So B is our answer. Keep up the great work. You're coming this far. It's only going to improve your understanding. Right, let's go for the next question. What do we notice here? Well, in figures one and two, a large shape and a small shape would make a whole shape if it's put together. So if this is rotated and placed over here, that would make a larger shape. And of course, the shape on the right would need to be rotated one quarter turn anti-clockwise and then fitted in. So instantly, we know that A wouldn't need to be rotated. That can just be put in. B looks as if that rotation would actually work. Let's come back to it. C doesn't look like the rotation would need to work. And likewise with D. So C, B is now our answer. And there we are. Okay, over to the second last question here. What do we notice? Well, in each figure, there's an angled arrow and two smaller arrows. So in figures one and two, we can see that the large shape is copied, doubled and placed on the top of the other one on the right. So you can see that's almost copied and doubled. Likewise for two is copied and doubled. And also the shading transfers from the large shape to the top of the two smaller shapes whilst the shading on the bottom of the two smaller shapes is different from the other two. So in box A, we can see that the smaller shapes are side by side, so that's incorrect. In box B, we can see that the top is actually the same and the bottom is different, so let's hold on to that one. In box C, the shading is upside down, so that's incorrect. And D looks like the smaller shapes have been reflected so B is actually our answer. Beautiful work. And over to the last question. So what do we notice here? Well, 
Figures one and two are made up of three shapes, a star, a polygon, and a pool ball. And in each case, the pool ball has a number which is, ooh, which is one less than the sides or points in the other two shapes. So what does that mean? So it has a number which is one less than the sides or points in the other two shapes. So again, that's four-sided. So this would be a three. So if we take a look at box B, it looks as if that's a five-sided pointed star and a six-sided polygon. So the shapes don't match. If you look at C, that has a four-pointed star and a six-sided polygon. So that doesn't work. And likewise with D, it has one number more than the other two shapes. So that means A is our answer, as we have a six-sided shape and we have a six-sided pointed star. Marvellous work. And that there brings us to the end of our video. You've now unlocked the power of NVR 11 plus similar shapes. We hope you enjoyed this mind-bending adventure and that it has boosted your problem-solving skills. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. And remember, practice makes perfect. So keep honing your NVR abilities and conquering those challenges. See you in the next video. And until then, keep exploring the world of non-verbal reasoning.